Hello, beautiful creatives. I have a couple of art supplies that I've been sent to share with you today. One is the, I believe it's the fifth generation of Paul Rubens watercolors. And the other is these super golden markers. These are metallic markers. Now I've showed you guys these on Patreon, Instagram, and showed you some art that I've done with these. I'm gonna swatch both the gold, the metallic markers and the watercolors out for you guys. So I haven't even opened this. I just took the plastic wrap off it, but I haven't even opened it and looked at them. I'm gonna read you some information that they sent me about these that makes them unique from their prior generations of watercolor. So I'm looking forward to swatching these out for you guys. Okay, so these are some of the pieces, and it's so hard to tell if the metallic is showing up on these, but this was just an abstract piece I did where I outlined shapes that I saw with the metallic markers. I think I used like the gold and one of the greens, and they're really vibrant colors. They're extremely fine points. So it's a little tricky using them in mixed media. I didn't find out until after I was sent them that they have uh, ones with bolder points. And if I had been given a choice, I definitely would have chosen for the type of work I do, um, the bolder point. But this is another one. I used the gold on the angel's wings and the red on this ribbon that string that runs around here, a little bit of the gold on the dog's collar, and there's like a purple color that I outlined his shirt with, and the green I outlined the girl's dress with. So they're really vibrant colors. They're beautiful. They go down beautiful. The set that I got is just super, super, super fine points, and I'll show you what I mean. Let me get these out of the way and I'll show you what I got. So I was sent these by Lightwish and the company, I've mentioned this before on YouTube videos about them. The company is G-U-A-N-G-N-A, -A, um, but they're distributed by Lightwish and it says super golden markers, super metal 12 colors, a new generation, super metallic effect pigments. And this set that I was sent is the 0 0.7 millimeter um, point. And it says they're water-based pigment ink. So uh, that's really all of the information that I have on the box, but I'll show you what they look like in my I got my swatch book out, so we'll we'll swatch these out and see what they look like. Wow, getting pretty far into this swatch book. Okay, so I've been looking these over and I cannot find the color name on any of these. So they do have a little chart on the back of the box, but I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't iron out what they were what they were saying with all of them. I mean, some of them are obvious, like they have verdant gold, green gold, blue gold. So those are kind of obvious, but these golds, there's gold, silver, yellow gold, orange gold, red gold, copper gold. I couldn't really figure out what was what on here. So we will just play with them. Okay, so I'll just, kind of do a scribbly line because these are so fine. So it keeps skipping. Wow. I don't know, maybe, maybe they really are only good for doing slow lines. They do spit a little bit. See, they're spitting drops. Maybe if I go lighter, I was pressing a little hard. Yeah, maybe if you go lighter, they don't spit the drops. Oh, it's skipping again. I don't know if you can see, but it's... Sometimes it goes real good. Ah, and there it goes again. Sometimes it skips. So you may have to really watch how you hold it. You may have to hold it. This is another one of the gold colors. 
just try going like try doing the same thing now this one is working better but it's still spitting still spitting they do make really nice fine lines I mean they would probably be good for signing pieces but they they really do skip I don't know if maybe every so often you have to pump them down again that may be it it may be that you only get so many lines but they do they do spit and they do skip see it's skipping strange okay gorgeous color though um This one has a much juicier line, oh, but it's still skipping. So apparently you probably have to refresh the, you know what I bet it is? I bet it's because these tips are so fine that you have to refresh them more frequently. I'm not used to using paint markers that are this fine. So I bet that's what it is. You just have to, um, you have to pump them down more frequently. Let me try that with this one and see how it works. Every so often I'm giving it a little push down. Yeah, and that seems to be working better. So you do, you have to remember to push them down every so often to keep, keep feeding that really fine tip. And this is the silver. Wow, this one's really skipping quite a bit. Now my thought is I'm wondering because these I'm wondering because these tips are so fine if they would um, get damaged if you used them on really rough surfaces like acrylic paintings. This one's this one's missing a lot. I'm pushing it down quite frequently. I think if I was going to try them again, I would try the the thicker tips. But again, for just signing something, I think these would be great or like outlining on watercolor. Yeah, this one too, skipping. I don't know if you can see, and I, I'm pushing down pretty frequently. I think if you draw slow, and you keep pushing down every so often, that's gonna be the trick. Gorgeous colors, though. Yeah, I, I think there's a little bit of a learning curve to handling these. Because as I go, as I slow down with them, this one's spitting like crazy. Yet you need to go slow, a little bit of pressure, Um, yep, keep them pumped up, go slow, a little bit of pressure the whole time that you're using them. You know, like if you did that with a Posca or a Montana, you'd get these big floods of paint. These are a little different in the sense that you, you want to, you want to keep a little more pressure on the tip. And it, and it does, when I go faster, I'm going a little fast because I want to try to get the whole watercolor set swatched out for you guys. Um, and I'm when I'm going faster, they're not working as well. They're working much better when I'm going slow. Whoops, that one skipped. Yeah, go slow and keep pumping, pumping them down every once in a while. I'm wondering if you can see the metallic element to them. They're really, uh, they really do have a nice metallic. Yeah, you got to <laughs> you got to play around with them a little bit to get them not to skip. But again, if I had a chance to try the 
These, this one did skip a lot. If I had a chance to try the fatter nib, I'm thinking that would not be a problem. I'm thinking it's just because, I mean, I can't tell you for sure, but I'm thinking all this skipping is because um, it's such a fine nib and you just have to really keep it pumped up with ink. Great for making dots. Great for making dots and small marks, small mark making. I mean, wow. They're really perfect for that. That's where this small nib would really shine is in making little marks. So that is the super golden marker set. Uh, 12 markers and when I used them in mixed media pieces they really had a wonderful metallic effect for outlining I don't know how well it's going to show up here it's the hard thing with um, you know when you're filming to see but if it doesn't show up they are super metallic they have a gorgeous metallic shine to them so that's the Super Golden Markers. I'll put a link to them below. They haven't sent me a coupon code yet. Um, I don't know if they're going to, but if they do, I will definitely put that below the video. I always have an art toolkit uh, coupon code below my videos. And I now have a uh, Senex wash coupon code below my videos and a Meaden coupon code below my videos. So anytime you buy products from Meaden, from Art Toolkit, or from um, Senex, be sure to grab those coupon codes. And I would be really grateful if when you did use one of my coupon codes, if you gave me a shout out on Instagram or Facebook or social media, because it really helps my channel out when you do that. But let me let this page dry and get myself set up to try. Actually, what I'll do is I'll just put this aside while it's drying and I'll open these and take a first look with you guys. Kind of excited to see what these look like. The fifth generation. You know, the thing about Paul Rubens is their packaging is always gorgeous. These boxes are amazing. They are so heavy and so protective of their product. I'm always so impressed with these with these uh, boxes, they're gorgeous. And then they usually give you a little cloth. Um, huh, interesting, this is a different texture than I've had in past ones. And they give you a some information with colors. This must be all the colors in this set. Ooh, really snazzy. They've kind of jazzed things up a little bit. And this is, oh, this is their glitter paper. They've never sent me any of their sketchbooks. Actually, I think they did send one for a, a Christmas present in that Christmas package. They've never sent me one of their large sketchbooks, though. But this is their glitter paper. Um, not crazy about the glitter, but this is going to be the swatch sheet. And it's actually really heavy paper. It feels good quality. So I may... Um, I'm probably going to do the initial swatching in my swatch book so I have more room, but I may actually um, use this as a swatch sheet to keep with the set. So let's unwrap this. Oh, bummer. It's like totally scratched up. I don't know if it's showing, but the whole box is wow, it's major scratched. It may not show because it's so shiny, but from here down, it's completely scratched. The black lacquer finish. I've actually never received a product from Paul Rubens that was scratched up like that. Although I usually do get the pink, the pink watercolor sets. This was my first black. Maybe it's because of the black. The scratches are showing up more. Um... Interesting, it's not scratched on the back. It does have a ding in it, but it's it's not scratched on the back. Oh, it's too bad it's not the other way around because I wouldn't care if it was scratched on the bottom, but the top is pretty badly scratched. 
Um, oh, it's such a pretty case, though, isn't I'm it? I'm going to. Uh, I think one. Oh, and this is ripped. Wow. Oh, oh, and it's. Oh, it's falling apart. The paint is falling apart. Oh my goodness. This poor palette really went through it. Usually, these are in really, really good shape when I get them. I suppose it's not that abnormal. Oh, it is chipping. It's all, the paint is all chipping out. Okay, well, hmm. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unwrap these and then um, figure out what I'm gonna do about labeling them. And then I'll come back and swatch them. Okay, I'm gonna come back on here because I just wanted to show you what's happening. Um, these are crumbling all over the place and the pans have like the crumbles from the other colors in them, but they also have embedded like outlines of other colors. I don't know if you can see that. Um, there's like a blue line all the way around from like blue pigment and this one, um, there's a, it looks like a blue line of blue pigment going right across it. And there's like, it looks like grains of sand. It's, there's granulation or grains on these. Um, like this one too. I don't know if it shows. It's, it's weird. It's got like, it almost looks like sawdust or something or sand, or maybe it's pigment. I should actually read Maybe these are like super granulating or something. They're falling out of the thing and there's chunks of the paint that are coming out. These, these, I've never had that happen with Paul Rubens before. They're just falling right out of the pans and there's, there's flakes of the pigment going everywhere. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have to clean that all up or I'll use another palette, I guess, when I mix so that, but there, it's everywhere. There's little pieces of the pigment. That's not what these marks are. These marks are actual, it looks like blue pigment pressed into the two pans. So, um, hmm, that's interesting. Let's see how it goes with the rest of them. This one's in there good. Okay, I'm gonna, um, unwrap the rest of these and I'll let you know they're really crumbly. I'll let you know uh, how it goes. What I'll probably do is do a voiceover because this text is so small. This was the text from the wrappers. I'm not going to be able to read it while I'm swatching. I actually needed to use a magnifying glass to read the names to write them because that's the other thing that's a little bit of a bummer. This has their code number and then some writing in Chinese and it has the pigments, but it didn't have the color name. So I went down, you know, looked at all these and then went down and wrote the color names on these. So we'll see. Um, but I think what I'll probably do is paint these swatches in and then do a voiceover with some information that they sent me about these paints and, and what they say makes them different from their fourth generation that was the tube tube paints that I swatched for you guys. And yeah, then at some point I'll, I'll also swatch them out on here. When I do a voiceover, I will read what the names are um, and possibly the pigment numbers. Okay, so this first color is Naples Yellow and it's PW6, PY53, and PBR24. The second color is Lemon Yellow and it's PY3. The third color is Cadmium Yellow Light, and it's PY35. Um, let's see, the orange color is Chromium Yellow Deep Hue, and it's PY65. The next color is Chromium Orange Hue, PO62. That's Cad Red Light, PR108 and Paraline Maroon PR179. That's Quinacridone Rose PV19. Quinacridone Maroon PV42. That's a pretty color. Dioxazine Violet PV23.
Uh, indigo is PB15 and PB66. French blue is PB29. This is Berlin blue. I love this color. It's uh, PB27. And then phthalo blue, PB15 colon 3. This is a uh, translucent turquoise, PB16. And this one is oriental green, PG7. The next one is may green, which is PY151 and PG7. This is Cobalt Turquoise Dark, um, PG26, and I love that color. It's a gorgeous color. Next, uh, Olive Green Dark, P062 and PG7. Earth Yellow, PY42. And then uh, Burnt Sienna. PR101 and PBK9. Venetian Red, which is another favorite of mine, PR101. I just love Venetian Red. Uh, brown Umber, PB15, uh, PBK7, and PBK9. And then the last one is Ivory Black, PBK9. And I don't wanna to forget to mention that there is a coupon code for both the watercolors and the markers down below the video in the video description area. I decided to go ahead and swatch, do the swatching on the uh, swatch sheet that they had included because it was such gorgeous heavy paper and I'm really glad I did because the swatches looked so vibrant on this really thick beautiful paper. The paper in my swatch book is it's just a regular sketchbook it's nothing fancy and I just felt like the swatches looked so gorgeous on this. The only thing that was a real bummer was after I finished this it does not fit in the palette, it would have to be trimmed. And if I trim it, it's gonna, I'd have to trim it further than I would wish I would have to. I'm probably going to end up trimming it because I really want it to fit in the palette. I just think that that was such an oversight that they made it so that it doesn't fit in the palette, but I'll trim a little bit off and uh, go from there. But yeah, loved, loved these colors, gorgeous colors. And I loved the way they looked on this swatch sheet. Okay, so there are both sets of swatching. I gotta say, I'm really glad I did it on this card. This paper is really nice. I don't think it said what the weight of this is or what this paper was. It says here, I have been impressed with the urgency of doing. Knowing is not enough, we must apply. Being willing is not enough, we must do. This was really nice paper. I did not like the glitter. The glitter adds a little bit of a weird texture. I just think, I don't know, it, it's a little weird to have the glitter in the color, but it, the paper is nice. The paper is super nice. So I think the colors really um, show better on this swatching than they did on my swatching on this regular sketchbook paper. Yeah, so I'm glad I actually have both sets to refer back to because this will have all the pigment information, the light fastness and all of that, which this, oh, this does have pigment information, just not light fastness and stuff. So that was worth it. And I love the colors. I really, really love the colors in this set. I feel like they laid down nice and flat. There are some stunning, stunning colors in here. This cobalt turquoise dark, olive green dark, this Berlin blue, 
oh my gosh, I, you know, and I love Venetian red and burnt sienna anyways. It's perline maroon. Oh, really gorgeous, gorgeous colors. Especially these, uh, this olive green, dark, and the cobalt. The oriental green is a turquoisey green. Really, really gorgeous muted colors. I guess that's what I'm seeing is they're more muted. You know, even these reds, well, except for the cad red, but these, these uh, quinacridones and the perline are more muted. Um, love indigo. Indigo is one of my absolute favorite colors to work with when I'm drawing with watercolor, which if you've seen my videos, you know I love to do that. Just take a brush and draw with watercolor and not use a pencil. Um, I might even have, oh yeah, I do have, I marked off a page in here. So like these were just, I just went in with the watercolors and a brush and just drew. I didn't do a drawing and they just come out kind of wonky and interesting. Um, these were the same way. This, I just drew these with a watercolor brush and allowed them to go wonky. And then this one I painted in afterwards. But yeah, so some of these muted colors, especially indigo is, indigo is such a great color to draw with. But yeah, I mean, there were some weird things about it in the beginning that it was very crumbly. It'll be interesting to see now that I've used it if they're going to stay crumbly or if any more of the paints are going to fall out of the pans like it did in the beginning. Um, but boy, I, I got to say, I can't complain about, I hope the, I hope they don't fall out. They do seem drier. Um, I haven't watched any other reviews on these, but they seemed drier to me. I did spritz them ahead of time and they seemed a little harder to pick up than some of the other Paul Rubens paints I've used. But I'm wondering if that's because they're more muted, sort of earthy tones. And to me, it's well worth the price if that's the reason why they're a little more bumpy in the pans and they're a little, um, a little stickier to pick up or a little, not stickier, but harder maybe. They don't stay as wet as long. They seem to dry out quicker, which you expect in earth tones. So it may just be the pigments. I don't know, but the colors are worth it. They really are worth, worth the very small complaints that I have about this set. It's actually my favorite set of colors right now. I, you know, when I first opened it and things were falling out of the pan and there was crumbs all over the colors and the case was all scratched up. I have to say I was really surprised because I don't think there's a product that Paul Rubens has sent me that I haven't liked. And this was a little weird the way this thing is kind of hanging, but, but the paints are worth it. They're, if you're a fan of more muted colors, um, this, these paints are really worth it. Wow. Love them. Really love them. So gorgeous so gorgeous i thought i would just film one more short bit to show you that i just took my little cutter and i just took a couple of quick uh or a couple of small swipes on each end so it just cut a little tiny bit of my writing off and a little tiny bit of the swatching off i didn't have to cut a whole lot you could do this before you did your writing if you decided to write the names on and before you did your swatches and you wouldn't even notice my cutting did come out a little uneven but that's okay because it fits now it fits in here. And I really, really did want it to fit in here. Oh, it doesn't close though. <laughs> well, at least it, it kind of fits. I really want to keep the swatch sheet uh, with the, I don't think it's gonna fit like that. No, it doesn't fit. I don't want to cut any more off of it. There, it does fit that way. So you can get it in there just by, by trimming it a little bit. You don't have to trim a lot off. But of course, I would do that. Um, it's hard to open now because it's so tight in there. Yeah, it does, you can make it fit in there. So there you go. Just trim a little bit off before you do your swatching. And you could get it. You know, you could even do it that way and just put an elastic band around it. But it does fit.
this way. And I actually have tape on mine, which might make it a little tiny, a fraction thicker. So if you, um, if you didn't have tape on yours, maybe it would close better. But it does close. So you can do it. <laughs> you can get it in there. Anyways, I just wanted to share that with you. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed that swatching. I do have another set of watercolors, a set of tube watercolors that I was sent that I will be swatching at some point in the future. And I hope you enjoyed seeing these super golden markers, super, super rich metallic colors. My only recommendation is I might try the larger nibs. Um, but we, we kind of did figure out how to work with these while I was playing around with them, how to work around the um, them running out of the pigment. But anyways, a few really fun products. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, I would really appreciate a thumbs up and subscribe if you'd like to see more of my videos. And I will see you in the next video. Bye. Have a great week.